Minister's office has shot down a controversial plan to slash the danger pay of Canadian soldiers still serving in Afghanistan. More than 900 troops are on a training mission just outside the Afghan capital of Kabul. But since they're no longer fighting the Taliban, a government panel decided to slash the soldiers' pay by about $500 a month. A former veterans ombudsman calls the pay cut reckless, saying Canadian troops are still a target. A spokesperson for the PMO says it will reverse the decision. To talk more about this about face by the government is Canadian press reporter Murray Brewster. And Murray, it must have been tough as a reporter yesterday just trying to wade through the various messages. Yes, well, Marcy, it was uh, very confusing because this government is usually pretty good about being in lockstep with its communications messages, and they seem sort of all over the map. It was uh, the pay cut was coming, and then it wasn't coming, and oh, well, it's going to be reviewed. So uh, at the moment, it's uh, gone back to a government panel, and it's going to be reviewed. Now, whether that panel uh, does the actual reversal or whether it sticks with this cut, you know, it, it remains to be seen at the moment. And maybe uh, the reaction from the public uh, and from the military itself had something to do with this about face. Well, this is a real political issue for the Conservatives because they've staked their flag on, uh, you know, supporting troops and uh, supporting the Canadian military. And it's a political black eye for them to be cutting the danger pay of soldiers who are in a rough spot in Afghanistan. I wouldn't say that it's as dangerous as Kandahar, but Kabul still is uh, a rough, rough neighborhood. It, it absolutely is. So how much responsibility should the government take uh, for these proposed cuts with all the pressure on the departments to cut spending? Well, that's a really interesting question because, you see, I was fascinated with the government's language yesterday in saying that they're asking this panel to reconsider or re-examine the decision. I mean, the government is the government. They can just turn around and say, you know, change this decision. But, um, you know, there's a great deal of pressure on the Defense Department right now because uh, the government is looking for perhaps upwards of $2.5 billion in savings from the defense budget. And the big question is whether or not this, uh, this panel of bureaucrats from both DND and from the Federal Treasury Board, uh, whether they felt compelled to make this cut. But as you say, Murray, it's a political hot potato and the government has to be uh, very careful where it steps on this issue. Well, yes, it's a minefield for them. It's a political minefield because the government has made a great deal of hay about uh, standing behind uh, men and women in uniform. Now, I mean, there's a sense, though, among many veterans and many women, men and women in uniform that uh, the government has, over the last couple of years since the end of the combat mission in Kandahar, been nickel and diming them. Uh, some of the examples I can give you are uh, military home equity when soldiers are uh, required to move. The government uh, has been uh, somewhat stingy where that's concerned. Uh, there was a controversy last fall involving the amount of money the government spends to bury impoverished soldiers. So uh, this just sort of adds on top of some of the woes that the government has faced with uh, you know, its, its political stand of supporting the troops. All right, Murray, we appreciate your insight. Thank you so much.